Okay, so uh, a, a quick recap of last week. So last week uh, we went over the second step in the lit systematic literature review procedure. So here on the screen is a chart of the eight steps. I'll make it a little smaller so that all eight will be visible. So here's a chart of the eight steps. The first being identify the purpose of the review. And so we identified the purpose. What we are trying to do is a theory mining review. Okay, so first step, identify the review. So we identify why we want to do a theory mining review, why it's important to us to build theory out of our literature reviews. And the next step is to draft a protocol and train the team. So the protocol is a plan of what we want to do. Uh, where Before we start doing the review, we plan it out in detail. So that's what the protocol is. So I will go over that briefly. So first, what is a protocol? As I said, it's a plan that describes the conduct of a proposed systematic literature review. Uh, then, oops, sorry. Then the next aspect is that uh, a protocol should be considered a working draft. So you initially draft a protocol after you have identified your objectives. You plan the entire study you want to do. Then you discuss with the research team to, and make revisions accordingly. And I'll say at this point, I, so a number of times I refer to the research team, and it's an obvious question uh, when you are a doctoral student, uh, you don't have a team. Well, on the contrary, a uh, doctoral student has a supervisor, so that's part of your team. Uh, and normally you'll have uh, at least two other members on your doctoral committee. I, I'm not sure exactly the procedure at IC University, but that's a standard structure. And those are members of your team as well. So the doctoral student is the leader of the team, and the supervisor is uh, the second major person, and then other committee members are other members of the team. So when I say that uh, training the research team in this context, it means get, getting feedback from your supervisor primarily, and ideally also other members of the review team. Then. As you actually start doing the review, you will iteratively revise it. You'll make revisions, like you start searching, you find things, you, there's some problems, you make revisions to the plan, and you keep on doing that throughout the execution of the review. And when you're finally done with the review, then the protocol that's gone through so many revisions is now the first draft of your final review article or your final uh, literature review chapter. So that's the idea of the protocol. Now, an important note is that when you're drafting the protocol, what is the order in which the various items will be? So uh, I distinguish between three relevant orders. There's the order for drafting a protocol. So when you have the protocol, there's various sections what are the sections of protocol and what is the progression when you're actually creating it. Then there's a different order when you're actually doing the literature review. And then there's a third order of your final finished product, what it will look like. And it's important to understand these three different orders so that you don't mix one up with the other. So when you're drafting the protocol, you're creating the first draft, you first identify the purpose, and then secondly, you document your creating of the protocol and the training procedures. So th this summary that I'm doing right now will go into details with that. Then uh, the next thing is you identify your synthesis. Uh, and this is very important because synthesis is uh, the most involved step of the review. So even though it comes later on, it's something you have to do right away. Uh, in the protocol because that will determine the other things. Then you design the practical screen, then the search quality appraisal and data extraction. Uh, however, when you're actually conducting the review, it's a different order. Uh, uh, the, the, the synthesis comes later on 
And actually, this course, the sequence of, of uh, lectures, is arranged in the order of actually conducting the, the review. But when you're doing the protocol, please take careful notes of this order presented here, because uh, that's how you would do it. Then when you finish the paper, here's a structure of what the final article would look like and how these various steps map into that. Okay, um, so for the protocol, uh, the first and very important thing is identifying what are the research questions for a theory mining review. So there's many different kinds of literature reviews, but in this course we're only talking about theory mining reviews. That is literature reviews that try to dig out theory from the primary studies that they're reviewing. Uh, so theory landscaping reviews, so that's one type of TMR, uh, focus on a theme, a topic, or a single concept. And so based on the theme or topic, you're trying to identify the concepts and relationships that other researchers have identified related to that theme or topic. Then a theory contending review focuses on theoretical relationships. You're, so it's, it's really you have a good idea of the theory you're looking at, and you're trying to build that theory, develop that theory, refine it, extend it, but you're not really trying to verify it empirically by doing empirical testing. You're just trying to talk about it, but in a very rigorous way. So you're contending or arguing or fighting for a new theory, which is why I call the theory contending review. Then a theory testing review you're testing theoretical relationships. So you actually have a very clear theoretical relationships and you only include empirical studies, as you only include studies that have actually done tests of the theory with real data. And you're collecting all the studies that have done tests and you're comparing them to find why some of them verify the theory, some of them contradict the theory, and try to explain the differences between uh, these results. So. So this is kind of research question you would have uh, for the three different kinds of theory mining reviews. Okay, so then training the review team. Um, first, I mentioned that uh, a literature review should be team research. So even if you're just a doctoral student, you have your team and you need to involve them. Then key aspects of training are one, uh, the protocol as a training manual. So that's the common, uh, the common plan that everyone is working on. And there's various worksheets that I'm providing through this course that could be helpful. Like today I have a new worksheet that I will present later for the practical screen. Then very important are research ethics and plagiarism. Everyone on the research team needs to be well educated uh, on having high ethical standards for research and also needs to be educated in understanding what is plagiarism so that uh, there's no negative effect on the entire team because of one person's ignorance or irresponsibility. Uh, then reference management software is uh, very uh, important, very useful to collect all your research and there's a number of different software. The one that I use is Zotero. So this is it on the screen. Uh, it's used to organize articles and uh, it, it has uh, different functions and I demonstrated uh, a few of the functions. Uh, Zotero is free unlike most of the others. Uh, Mendeley is also free but Zotero is not only free it's also open source software. Uh, so it's worth it takes some time to learn how to use it, but it's for your scholarly career, it is indispensable. So it's absolutely worth taking the time to learn uh, how to use it. And for a literature review, you would use something like that to collect all the articles you found, and it can be shared easily. The articles can be shared easily among the team uh, and manage the references and actually save the PDFs if available within the software. Uh, then you need to have some common standards for taking notes. 
on research ethics and plagiarism, uh, because I'm sure you've already received education on that as part of your IC University program, I won't go to detail reviewing it. But on this slide, I do have uh, some useful resources uh, for that. Then, uh, as I mentioned earlier, who is your review team for individual doctoral dissertation? Okay, most of all, the doctoral candidate is the review team, but you also have your supervisor, you have other committee members. Then another very useful practice is in, in some stages of the review, like when you're collecting articles and, and collecting the data out of the articles, it's, it's ideal to have at least two people do that so that they can check each other's work. If one person makes mistakes, the other person will catch them. Uh, for a doctoral dissertation, it's not so practical, uh, but what you could do is you could partner with another doctoral student where the, uh, for your dissertation, the other doctoral student will maybe look at 10% or at least 50 of the items and try to code them, and then you can compare your results with that student's results to have an idea of how accurate what you're doing is. Then you can help that student for their doctoral dissertation, you can do the same thing. So that's a way you can actually work with each other to help each other and actually have a team and increase the quality of your final product. Okay, so I provided uh, some examples of protocols so that you can actually see when we talk about protocols, what are we looking at? So going through those uh, examples will, will help you there. Then an important step of... Um, of the protocol and training and to enhance the rigor or the quality of the study is to do pilot studies. And so, and, and first of all, I'm talking about a full literature review. I'll, I'll talk separately about pilot study for this course. But for assuming you're doing a full literature review, either as a standalone study or as part of your dissertation study, the pilot study is, as much as possible, is a first run of the entire review. Before you do the official review, you do you do a test run. So one, maybe you just do a test run of the search and a practical screen, at least of that, so they have an idea what you're looking for and what is out there. Um, but a, a more rigorous way to do it is that before you do each step, such as the search, the data extraction, the synthesis, you take maybe a small number of the articles and you do that test like you do the search for a small number you do data extraction for a small number then you look at any problems you have you revise your protocol before you do everything then before you do you synthesize all the articles you take a small number you try to synthesize them together you find problems you revise your protocols and then you do the synthesis for everything um so th so that's what a pilot study means in the context of a literature review now, for this course, uh, what the pilot study means is that it's not realistic in a 12-week course that you do a full professional literature review or even the literature review for a dissertation. It should be considered the first draft for what you'll be doing your dissertation. So the main two parts that are, are most important are you need to do a comprehensive literature review which means that you will find all the literature that is relevant um, and then out of all the literature, so you do a full literature search, but then you identify the most promising studies. And that's very subjective, what's promising. It could be the most highly cited ones. It could be the ones just looking through all the abstracts, glancing through the papers, the ones that really seem to be most relevant. So you take 10 to 20 of them, and you only synthesize 10 to 20 of them for this course. And that's just because it takes time to synthesize a lot of articles. So to reduce the scope, you focus on uh, just 10 to 20 of the most promising ones. And what you would do is you identify the concepts and relationships in those selected studies, and you map the relationships, meaning that, uh, and later on when we come to the synthesis chapter, I'll talk in more in detail about causal modeling, which is one approach to synthesis that I recommend for this course. But I'll also present other approaches that could be used. 
Okay. So that is a brief summary review of what we did last week.